Hello students, this is Professor Valerie Pell at River Wright College in Chicago. In this presentation is titled Academic Essay Overview. In this presentation, we'll cover what an essay is. We'll use an analogy of a, going to a restaurant to describe the academic essay. We'll look at the basic structure and components of the academic essay, and then we'll have a CAT, a classroom assessment technique, to quiz your knowledge of uh, the presentation. So what is an essay? When we think about essays, the roots of the essay date back to rhetorical speeches given in early Western civilization. Think the Greeks and the Romans. Think togas. Think uh, Socrates. <laughs> think Plato and Aristotle. Uh, the structure comes from those rhetorical speeches that were given in uh, early Western culture. However, the first essays are thought to have been written by this guy, Michel de Montaigne, in the 16th century. He uh, was pretty much the first person to write down essays um, in the form and style that we often think of them today. The word essay comes from the French word essai, which means to attempt or to try. So when you think about writing an essay, you should really think about them as your ability to um, try developing an idea all the way through. That doesn't mean just because you try that you always succeed fully. Um, the trying is more important than um, necessarily the success, like if your argument is the best in the world. The idea is for you to try developing your own argument and your own thought line. And of course we want you to be successful when you do that, but an, es an essay doesn't have to be something that you think of as being perfect. Um, it's your practice at developing a thought line of thought. So, um, the college essay is similar um, to these initial um, essays by Montaigne. The difference really is that um, you are trying to communicate your viewpoint and argument about a topic. So again, it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be um, you doing um, some strong intellectual work. The restaurant analogy. So you might be thinking to yourself when you heard this, why would she be talking about restaurants <laughs> when uh, we're, we're talking about essays? Well, I like to relate um, abstract concepts to things that are kind of every day. And most of you are accustomed to going to a restaurant in the United States because it follows a certain type of formula that you're all familiar with. And the essay follows a very similar formula. So when you first come to a uh, restaurant, who do you meet? The host. That's right. The host is there to welcome you into the restaurant. They ask you how many in your party, where would you like to be seated, they take you to the table, they give you the menus, they get you settled down into the chair. They make you really feel like you're welcome and that you want to be there. So a host welcomes you. They make you feel comfortable. They make you want to feel like uh, they make you feel like you want to be there, and that's really important in a restaurant. Now, having a bad host isn't going to destroy your whole experience um, at a restaurant. Uh, but it definitely is going to make it better. It's going gonna, it's gonna to tip the scale in terms of how good your experience was. You know, you might have um, a five-star meal, but if your host is only two stars, your meal is still successful, but if you were to rate it on Yelp or something, you might make it four instead of five because of the, the um, bad host. But it's still an integral part of that whole experience. So after uh, the host is there, then um, 
Next comes your interactions with your server. And the probably the one of the most integral parts of your experience with your restaurant or at the restaurant is your order. So when you have your order, it's really important because it's going to guide everything else for the rest of your uh, stay at the restaurant. So let's say in this example that um, you order the house Merlot and you want to order the beet salad and then you want to order the sirloin steak medium rare. Your server writes that down and then facilitates those things coming out to you in the right order. The order is really important again because it gives the plan for your entire meal. So um, once you've given your order to the server, uh, she or he will go back and start working it out. So first will come your Merlot, and then your beet salad, and then your steak. So, uh, and hopefully, if all goes right, if since those are the things that you order, those should be the things that come out. And uh, if they don't come out like that, then you have a problem, right? So if you notice, uh, we ordered our beet salad with sauce on the side, and look, there it is. You see the little ramekins with the sauce on the side. We ordered our steak, medium rare, there it is, medium rare. We asked for the Merlot, and they all came out in the right order. That's really important. Um, when we have our um, when we make our order and if at this point if these things don't come out right we have a problem right a major problem with the um, time that we're at the restaurant and then uh, when we're done at the restaurant we uh, usually wrap up right when we're done eating we wrap everything up we get ready to go so the server will bring your bill right and you check over the bill you look you literally look back through your meal <laughs> when you look at the bill right you make you see that everything's on there that it matches what you ordered um, and then you pay and then you get up from the table right it, you left a mess <laughs> and then what do you do you don't stay at the table all night, you move forward, you move on. So you've looked back at where you've been and you also look forward or out and to whatever is going to come next. In this case, maybe you're gonna go out with your friends afterward. Okay, so you look where you've been and you also look forward. So uh, the basic formal essay structure so your essay structure is a lot like going to that restaurant. So your uh, attention grabber is like the host. Your thesis is like your order. Your body paragraphs are just like your meal. Your conclusion is like wrapping up the meal. Okay, so your attention grabber is like the host because it's going to introduce and welcome readers into your paper. It's gonna get them feeling comfortable with your paper and make them feel like they wanna be there. Your thesis is like your order because it's gonna plan out your entire paper. It's gonna plan which directions you're gonna go. It's gonna tell, it's gonna tell your reader exactly where you're gonna go and how you're gonna get there. And then the body paragraphs are like your meal because they are the extension, the actual development um, from your order. And then your conclusion is like um, getting the bill and wrapping up at a restaurant because it's going to sort of look back a little bit at where you've been, but it's also going to be looking forward and looking beyond where you've been. So um, y when you look at your five, this uh, standard five paragraph essay, um, your introduction is going to have two parts to it. It's going to begin with an attention grabber and then it's gonna end with a thesis. You're going to have body paragraphs that begin with topic sentences. And those topic sentences are going to relate directly back to your thesis. They're gonna, they're gonna grow right out of there. They're not gonna be, um, they're gonna be taken directly from the ideas and, and parts of your thesis. Then your conclusion is gonna wrap up the whole essay using a strategy and look beyond where you've just been. 
you want to make sure in your conclusion that you just don't say in conclusion and restate your thesis because <laughs> that's a little too redundant and it's too low level thinking for a college essay. So let's look a little bit closer at your introduction. The first paragraph is called your introduction. It's going to begin with an attention grabber, um, which is also sometimes called a lead or a hook, depending on uh, who you talk to or where. And it's going to end with a multi-part thesis. So it looks sort of like this, right? The attention grabber is on top, then the thesis is on the bottom. So there are some strategies that you'll use for your attention grabber to invite the reader into the essay and make the reader feel comfortable and welcome. They're going to encourage the reader to keep reading. I'm not focusing too much on the attention grabbers in this particular lecture because we'll look at that in um, its own lecture uh, about titles, introductions, and conclusions. Now, your explicit thesis. What is an explicit thesis? An explicit thesis is a one sentence statement that does the following. It will identify the topic of the essay. The topic is who or what you're writing about. The topic should, when you're writing a thesis, an explicit thesis, you should strive to make the topic of the essay the subject of the sentence. When you make that explicit thesis have the topic as the grammatical subject of the sentence, it gives the most uh, grammatical power and weight to that topic. It, get, it puts it, that topic, what you're writing about, who or what you're writing about, at the most important, the strongest point in your entire essay. Since your thesis is like that order of the, at your restaurant, you want each one of those items in um, your order to be in the right place. And the topic of the essay should be the grammatical subject of that sentence. Your explicit thesis will also contain a claim about the topic. The claim is what you're saying about the topic. And the claim is also integral of your, your explicit thesis. It needs to, uh, it's what you're going to say about that topic and it should be the verb of your thesis statement. Again, because your thesis statement is so important, it should be the verb so that it, um, can have that essential grammatical weight because the claim inherently has the action of your thesis. It's what you're trying to prove. It's what you're doing. It should be the verb. And then your explicit thesis should list the reasons why you, the writer, have a particular claim about the topic. So those reasons are the list they're the reasons why you have the claim that you do about the topic. The reasons will often and be in um, parallel structure as dependent clauses or as phrases in a list at the end of your thesis. You want those reasons to be in subordinate or less important phrases in your thesis so that the topic and the claim, the two most important things, can really shine in that explicit thesis statement. So why should you use an explicit thesis? Can't you just write one that's implied, sort of like assume that your reader knows what you're trying to argue? Well, for one, an explicit thesis helps keep the writer focused. And um, in college, especially for beginning writers, it's really easy to get off track. So uh, your instructors will want you to write an explicit thesis. It also lets the reader know up front what your essay is going to cover, what ground you're going to cover, where you're going, and what you're doing with the, in your essay. And most importantly, it's what's expected from most college essays. So most of your instructors are going to want to see an explicit thesis like that. Now as you get um, into certain classes and certain disciplines, it might be a little more loosey-goosey. You might be able to have an implied thesis when you 
um, get into upper division classes or you're in particular disciplines. But by and large, most instructors are going to want you to use an explicit thesis. And if you are thinking that you want to do something a little uh, less uh, ordinary, then you should really talk with your instructor before doing it. <laughs> Where does your thesis go? It's the last sentence of your introduction paragraph. You always <laughs> want to have your thesis as the last sentence. And um, because that's where it's expected to go. <laughs> your, it flows logically and rhetorically from your attention grabber to your thesis. Your thesis, if it's at th where, that's where your reader is expecting it to be. So um, you don't want to confuse that. You have to show that you know that material. So now what about your topic sentences in your body paragraphs? So you're, when you uh, write a traditional academic essay, each topic sentence of your body paragraph should be the first sentence of the body paragraph, okay? You don't wanna bury it at the bottom, you don't wanna get creative, you want to make sure that it's the first sentence of each body paragraph. It signals to your reader that you, uh, you know what that paragraph is gonna be about. Each um, body para paragraph should begin with an explicit topic sentence that relates back to your thesis, but without being redundant, okay? So you want to have all those same components that you had in your thesis in your uh, topic sentences of your body paragraphs. So what does that mean? So that means each topic should restate the topic, restate the claim, and restate the corresponding reason. So the reason that goes in the order that you put it in in the thesis statement. You want to use tra transitional phrases to link um, your reasons uh, for your second and third body paragraphs. You want to link back to the, the reasons that come before it. And you also want to reword your topic claim and corresponding reason each time so that they don't sound exactly like your thesis. When you get into your body paragraphs, you don't have to have that strict structure of topic being the subject, claim being the verb, and reason being the dependent clause. When you're in your topic sentences of your body paragraphs, you can mix those around. So let's see what that looks like. So if this is like our introduction and our three body paragraphs, it might look something like this. And now granted, I'm giving you a really silly topic here, um, example here, but that's okay. It's for illustrative purposes. So let's say that this is your thesis. Liver's the worst food in the world because of its taste, smell, and the organs function in life. So, if we had uh, the first topic sentence, we might reword this to say the taste of liver makes it the worst, okay? So you notice here that we have, we've liver is still in there. The topic that we mentioned of this uh, thesis is still in that topic sentence. We also have the claim. The claim is that it's the worst, right? So we're here again, we're using that same thing. And then we're also having um, the reason, the first reason is taste, but you see that I have the, that the, I have switched it all around, right? So it doesn't sound exactly the same as it did before in the thesis. Then our second one, our second body paragraph, we're going to transition to link it back to the reason we were just talking about, which is the taste. Um, we're, g and we're going to reword, um, the second topic sentence. So again, we have the topic claim and the reason. So the example here is not only is the taste awful, see how I'm linking it back to the first one. Not only is the taste also awful, but also the smell of liver is revolting, making it the worst food. So you see, we again identify the topic liver, the claim that it's the worst and uh, the reason, right? It's smell. And then I've also linked it back to the first reason. Okay, 
So then uh, we move on to the third reason, and we're gonna do a very similar thing. We're gonna link back to the first and the second reason, and then we're gonna restate the topic, the claim, and the third reason without sounding redundant. So it might be something like this. Although the taste and smell of liver are atrocious, thinking about how the organ functions in life truly makes it the worst. All right, so again, you see we've got that transitional phrase, linking it back to the first and the second reason. We've re-identified the topic, the claim, and the reason. This helps signal to your reader when you're moving on to each new section of your paper. Now, the content of your body paragraphs. You wanna make sure that you're always giving direct evidence to show support of your claim. You don't wanna lose sight of your claim when you're giving your the content in your paper. So if you, so make sure that you have concrete evidence linking back to that claim. And also link all of your details back to the claim. Now your conclusion. Your conclusion should give closure to the essay. It should make the re reader feel satisfied and it should leave a lasting impression. And you'll do that by employing some um, strong conclusion strategies. We'll look at conclusion strategies in the lecture titled Titles, Intro, and Conclusions. Okay, so we're wrapping up our session here. We've come to our classroom assessment technique to see how well you've uh, understood the material. So see if you can answer these questions. If not, you should probably go back through the lecture again. One, what does the French word assign mean? Two, how is your thesis like the order at a restaurant? Three, what parts are needed for an explicit thesis? Four, why should you have an explicit thesis? Five, what part should your topic sentence have? Six, should your topic sentences be reworded to avoid redundancy? Seven, which topic sentences should begin with transitional phrases? All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining me today. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Have a wonderful day.